Hey, what's up everybody? Fish Tank Guy here, and today I'm going to be talking to you about moving my five gallon Pico Reef. It's not gonna to be too difficult because the tank doesn't have any fish in it and there's only one coral on the bottom and it's not a very large tank, so not a whole lot to do here, but I just wanna take you guys through the steps that I'm going to follow when moving this tank and if you have a tank of the same size, you can probably do something similar. Now keep in mind, I'm only moving a few minutes away, so that might factor into the way I do things, but you know, if you're moving locally within your own town to a different house, a bigger house, a smaller house, whatever you decide to do, this could be uh, helpful for you, hopefully. So uh, let's see what I'm gonna do here. So with a tank this size and the fact that there's no fish in the tank, there's not a whole lot that I really need to do to move this from one place to another. Now, I'm going to empty over half of the water because with a tank of this size, since I can carry it on my own, I wanna make it manageable. And because I have no coral near the surface of the water because there are no fish, there's really no major consequence of draining a good bit of the water before I move it to the new place. Now, you need to keep in mind that every gallon of water weighs about eight pounds. So let's just do some rounding here and say, all right, I've got five gallons of water in this tank. So that's about 40 pounds. I've got about five to 10, we'll round up, pounds of live rock. That's another 10 pounds, or that's, <laughs> of course it's another 10 pounds. That's about 50 pounds. And then I have another five pounds of sand in the tank. So we're sitting at 55, which is something I can easily carry. But if you're going to be transferring this thing in a car, this water is going to be flying all over the place as you drive to your new house. So that is the main reason with this small of a tank that I will be draining the water. Also, it makes it easier for me to carry too. Not going to lie, that's a big plus. But more, uh, more than anything, I want to make sure that uh, you know, I don't get my car soaking wet and it's easy for me to carry and move from one place to another. That way I run less of a risk of fumbling it and dropping it because it's heavier, that kind of thing. So I'll show you where I'm going to drain the water to and then uh, that'll pretty much be it. All right. As you can see, I've drained out the tank and now it might be a little bit easier for you to see the purple algae on the glass. However, um, as of draining here, I took the water down pretty much as low as I can go. The coral is still underwater there, but I still removed a majority of the weight from the tank, so it will be easier for me to carry. Now, even though there are no fish in the tank, I don't want to dilly-dally because there are some inverts in there and I want to make sure that they are safe and they survive the move. So the next thing I'm going to do is I, I'm going to use these things. I don't know what they're called, but they come in packages when you order stuff from uh, online. They're like bubble bags or something. It's similar to bubble wrap, but it's bags. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of wrap them around the rocks in the tank because especially with the rock on the right, since it is standing vertically, it might have a tendency to shift and I don't want it to slam into the sides of the tank when I'm driving the tank to the new house. I don't want anything to crack or get damaged. And in addition, having those bubble bags in your tank will eliminate the um, uh, all the sloshing of the water and the splashing up of the water that will occur naturally when you're driving to your uh, new location. So I'm gonna throw that in the tank and show you what it looks like and then talk about getting it out of here and moving it to the new place. Okay, as you can see, I have the bubble bags packed inside the tank. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the light. I don't want to keep that on there because you know you don't want it to break. I'll set it aside separately from the tank. I'll make sure everything is unplugged. I will, I already have, but you should clear out a spot in your vehicle to set your tank, uh, preferably one that's flat and level. And then all you do is pick up the tank and move it out into the car. So I will show you what to do when you get to your new location uh, after this. But the first thing I want to say is you need to make sure that you have both pre-mixed salt water ready to go and RODI water. The reason being is you're going to fill up your tank 
with the salt water. And if you, you know, you want to make sure your salinity is on point, so you might need some RODI to balance it out, that kind of thing. And some of you may be wondering, hey, do you need to keep all the water when you move? Well, for larger tanks, you're going to want to keep a good amount of your water. But in this case, because there are no fish in the tank, because there's a low bio load, and because my rocks have a lot of good bacteria in them at this point, I'm not worried about using the existing water that was in this tank. Fresh, clean salt water will be nice because I have not changed the water in some time. And I'm sure those corals and those inverts will really like a good dose of clean water. So I'll be seeing you when I get to the new place and we'll talk about getting this sucker set up and running. Okay, here we are at the new place, and I forgot to mention that another benefit of using these bubble bags is for a smaller tank like this where you don't have many components, you can actually just lay all of your cores on the top. You don't have to separate them and wrap them up and all that other stuff. You can just set them on the top there. And even if they get in the water a little bit, you can just dry them off with a towel when you get to your new location. So before I proceed, one other thing I want to mention is when you're filling up your tank in your new location, you want to make sure that your salt water and your RODI water is close to the temperature that you want your tank to be at. Even though there's a small amount of water in this tank, it's still close to the temperature that you had it at before you moved it. So you don't want the water to be too hot or too cold and shock, you know, in this, in this instance, it's just the inverts, but you don't even want to shock those guys with an extreme temperature change. So make sure that your water is semi-close to where you want it. And uh, basically all you do from this point on is set the tank up as you normally would. I will show you what the finished product looks like in a few minutes and I will scan the basement so you can see the pandemonium that I'm dealing with right now in terms of moving. So all right, I'll be back in a sec. Okay, so as you can see, the tank is up and running. I do not have the light on yet and I still have to get some purple stuff off of the glass, but everything is looking pretty good so far with the tank and all is well, right? So I'll do a quick scan of the basement here. I'll show you what's going on. There's a bunch of, well, that's right, there's a Super Nintendo, that's correct. There are a bunch of boxes over here, getting everything set up. There's my desk, getting everything set up up there. And then over here, we just have a whole mishmash of boxes and random things. So that's kind of what I'm dealing with moving here, but soon, we will have things back in order and the channel will be up and running again with new videos and new content for you guys to check out. So. Once again, I'm the Fish Tank Guy. Thank you so much for checking out my channel in this video. And until a future Fish Tank Guy video, I will see you guys soon.